It isn't unheard of for locomotives to be transported from one country to another, sometimes as part of a business deal, sometimes for publicity, and sometimes for that one thing we all love, war. As a result, we have some American locomotives in Europe, European locomotives in China, and the subject of today's video, British locomotives all over the Middle East. As some of you may know, between 1939 and 1945, a large proportion of Europe decided to have a fight and the rest of the world ended up getting dragged into it. Again. During this time, railways were essential in the transport of troops and supplies. During the outbreak of the war, Britain needed a standardised freight engine design that would be powerful, easy to maintain, and able to work on almost any stretch of line. The design used was William Stanier's 8F, used by the LMS. Hundreds were built to pick up the slack left by older or worn-out freight engines still in use, keeping everything moving like clockwork in an otherwise chaotic time. Some 8Fs were built to aid the British forces in France, but didn't arrive until the fall of France in 1940. They they did find use elsewhere, however, aiding troops all over the Middle East. Not every railway was equipped to handle the sudden influx of troops and supplies, and as such, more locomotive power was needed. More 8Fs were built and shipped overseas to Egypt, Iran, Turkey, and Palestine, having cow catchers, headlamps, and different couplers added to follow with railway regulations. Some were even modified with differently balanced wheels of motion to allow them to reach higher top speeds. A few engines never even made it to their intended destinations, with many being lost at sea during transportation. The ones that did make it worked hard and made a name for themselves among the workers of the railways they ran on. 42 wound up in Egypt with an additional 142 working in Iran, 20 in Turkey, and some belonging to the Middle East forces being sent to Palestine and Israel in 1942. The 8Fs served their purpose shunting and moving supplies, but it was clear in some areas that the engines weren't designed to work in these foreign environments. The engines running in Egypt had trouble keeping their water tanks full due to the scarcity of water. On top of this, smoke and steam from the engine over the desert landscape made them very easy to spot by enemy aircraft, making them easy targets. When America sent diesels to aid in Egypt, the 8Fs were quickly set aside for less essential duties. A similar story happened in Iran. With the engines finding it difficult to work effectively in the desert weather, they were quickly put aside once American diesels arrived to help with the war effort. The ones sent to Turkey managed to find work as short-distance good engines and shunters, despite them being designed with long distance in mind. This was due to the engine's limited capacity for coal and water, and overall incompatibility with Turkey's railway infrastructure compared to the engines already in use. Despite this, they still worked hard, staying in use on Turkish state railways well into the 1980s. The 8Fs served the British force as well, but by 1943, Robert Riddles' austerity designs proved to be cheaper and more adaptable than the 8Fs, and as such, became the new favourite standard freight design, used throughout the UK as well as being sent to Greece, the Netherlands, America, and even as far as Hong Kong. By the time the war was over, 10 8Fs were purchased by Iraqi state railways, more than 24 were under ownership of Palestine Railways, 62 were operating on Egyptian state railways, 22 in Iran, and 15 had managed to find their way all the way to Italy. More than 39 engines found their way back to England, but not all were immediately fit for service. Many were worn out or in need of modifying back to their original state. Number 8233 had derailed while in Persia and had been converted to burn oil in 1944. It was in a poor state when it came back in 1952, and so it was overhauled at Derby Works before being put to work on the Longmoor Military Railway before finally retiring to the Severn Valley Railway. Most of the engines that stayed abroad were scrapped in their respective countries once they became redundant with a handful still stored in sidings waiting to either be cut up or preserved. Their legacy does still live on in the countries they worked in, with four preserved in Turkey at the Chamlik Railway Museum, Sinkan Railway Station, and Izmit Old Railway Station respectively, with number 45166 on display at the Beersheva Railway Station, restored to how it looked while running on Israel railways. One remains in Baghdad awaiting formal preservation, with another dumped somewhere in Kankiri. Two of the Turkish 8Fs were brought back home, the first being number 8247 in 1989, 
currently residing at the Great Central Railway, the other being number 45170, which was purchased alongside number 45166 by the Churchill F8 Trust. Number 45170 currently resides at the Bowness and Keneal Railway, awaiting overhaul, having been named Sir William McAlpine, while number 45166 was cosmetically restored and sent back to Turkey on display at Beer Shiva. Overall, the 8Fs were a vital part of the war effort, and despite them not entirely running smoothly on foreign rails, still managed to do the heavy lifting they were designed to do working on Turkish, Iraqi, Iranian, Palestinian, Israeli, Egyptian, and even Italian railways long after they were needed by the war effort. Despite their shortcomings, they really were the right engine for the job. So next time you happen to see one at your local Heritage Railway, search up the engine's number, and you might find it's travelled a lot further than you thought. Subscribe for more.